Well, we all know we're headed into the busiest time of the year, but you can still get some decluttering done. In fact, there's 10 things that you should declutter right now. They're gonna free up extra space in your house and make the holidays go smoother. They're gonna help others, and you might be able to make a little money off of them as well. So grab a donation box and we'll make a, a trip around your whole house together. It's gonna feel so good. Well, we just got through our five days to an organized Christmas workshop. It's completely free. And if you wanna go back and watch the replays or see all the gift guides, there's a lot of really helpful information in there. And so as I was pulling out our winter gear, yes, here in Minnesota, we're already pulling out winter gear, darn it. <laughs> it was causing me to think about my values around stuff because in the five days to an organized Christmas, we talked about our values around gifts and gift giving and it was such a helpful conversation. And so then as I was pulling this stuff out, it was causing me to think about my values around stuff. And so one of the values that I've developed is that if we have extra stuff that we aren't using and someone else could benefit from, then I want to donate it or share it with them in, in some capacity. In other words, I don't wanna store up stuff in our house for just in case if there are others that could be using it right now. And so the first thing we wanna go through this year, if you live in a cool weather climate, would be all of your extra cool weather gear. So boots and hats and mittens and, and snow gear and all of that. And so we were going through our bin for the year. And you know, this is probably a value that I developed even before we highly simplified our house because even though we grew up fairly modestly, my parents were are the some of the most generous people that I know. And my mom would always during the holidays, even though we had very little and she was trying to make ends meet and have just enough for us, she was still always thinking about others. And I know I've shared about that before, so I won't belabor the point. But this was something that I got to witness and experience growing up that us sharing with others never created lack for ourselves. It was never like, oh, because we gave extra to them, now we don't have enough for ourselves. That was never the case at all. And so if we have anything that we're not using right now, then let's share it with someone who could actually use it right here today. Now, not all of it necessarily is in good condition to be shared. Let me show you this snow pants. So we had our, our donation pile going on the floor over there as we were like trying everything on. And so like these boots, they don't fit anyone anymore. And again, I was keeping them because I'm like, well, what if uh, Tom's nieces or nephews come? Like we had an occasion a couple years ago where we they came and we didn't expect it to snow and, and whatever. But again, we've kept them for two years now and no one else has used them. So I'm like, no, I would rather see these get worn this year by someone and not continue to sit in storage. But I know, you know, especially with kids and they're like losing stuff and all that, like we had this extra pair of snow pants. I'm like, well, maybe we should keep them for just in case. But I've also seen the flip side of this where I try to store up stuff and what happens? Uh, the basement gets wet and it gets ruined or mice get into it or moths or somehow, some way, my attempt at preserving it and storing it never works. So that has also helped to shape this value too of like, if we have anything extra, let's just share it with others. Now, I'm not talking like survival things. So, you know, we've showed, do we have some extra food storage? And we're gonna talk about blankets and stuff. Do we have a few extras? Yes, I'm not talking about being rash and, and not having anything in case of emergency, but really having a duplicate pair of snow pants isn't gonna help us really, right? Like no one's gonna wear two pairs of snow pants, right? So I'm gonna let this stuff go and not try to save it for someday. Oh, and you already decluttered your old saggy mattress, right? Well, this is the perfect time of year to upgrade your mattress and today's video is sponsored by Helix and let's face it, most of us don't actually need anything for Christmas, so why not ask for a new mattress? The gift that keeps on giving all year long, year after year. So we've had our Helix mattress for over two years now and we couldn't be happier with it. We love that every single morning we wake up feeling well rested and we no longer have all of those aches and pains that we were waking up with. You'll also see how our mattress is still nice and flat. It's actually not normal for your mattress to have big dips in it. No, you want it to be supportive. And what we love about Helix is they make it so easy for you to get matched with your perfect mattress as well. So you just go online and you take their sleep quiz and you answer a few questions about your sleep preferences. So what's your preferred sleep position? For me, I'm a side and stomach sleeper. How about this? Were you ever waking up with back pain? 
Yes, Tom and I were both waking up with back pain in the past. I just thought that was part of getting older until we got our new mattress and now neither of us wake up with any pain at all. And then they'll also ask you what type of firmness do you generally like as well. And when you're done with the quiz, they'll have matched you with your perfect mattress. And here's what's so great. Shipping is free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box delivered to your door. It is so convenient and easy to set up. So you're gonna get it into your room, you're gonna unroll it, let it take shape, and that same night, you're gonna be getting an awesome night's sleep on your new mattress. And you also get their 100 night sleep guarantee. So 100 nights to test it out, sleep on your stomach, on your side. Make sure it's just the right fit for you. And if not, don't worry, they will gladly take care of exchanging it for you. And then beyond that, they also have a 10 year warranty. And like I said, our mattress is holding up so well. It's still flat, it's still supportive. We're still getting a really great night's sleep on it a couple years later. And if you're looking for something even more premium, you can also check out the new Elite line of Helix mattresses. They truly have something for everyone. All right, well, hopefully I've talked you into decluttering your old mattress. And if you use our link down below, you're gonna save 20% and get two free pillows as well. So I'm telling you, put it right at the top of your Christmas list. Okay, next let's talk about blankets and linens. So when I did that like mega purge in the boys closet upstairs, we came across some extra blankets and they all have like two throw blankets on their beds or in their bedrooms each. And so these were just extras. And then I also still have like a canvas, one of those zip around containers of some extra blankets too. If it were like a, oh, the power goes out, we lose heat for a long time. You know, we are in Minnesota. Like again, I'm not trying to be foolish with any of this. And so I come across these blankets and I sent them through the wash and I was trying to figure out like, what should we do with them? And so I was thinking, I'm like, well, should I create another container of extra blankets? And I'm like, really, I think like, again, if we needed to stay warm, uh, we have plenty of blankets to do that, right? In case of an emergency. And I don't want to store extras when others could make use of it. And I don't have to manage these anymore, right? There is a point uh, where the benefit of having the extra uh, inventory diminishes and now it's just a stressor of extra things that we have to manage. And so some extra blankets are great, helpful, useful, necessary. But then it gets to that point where it is just excess. Again, I'm having to protect it, make sure it doesn't decay in storage, make sure they never get wet, mice don't get into them, all that. So it goes from benefit to burden really quickly. So all right, next, let's talk about holiday decor. I might have just gotten some new pillows uh, for Christmas. They make my heart so happy. I realized, we joke about throw pillows around here, right? I realized that I have not bought any new throw pillows in over a year. The last pillows I got, they're over a year old. I have loosened up and I let the kids like just totally destroy them and they don't look so great anymore. But this is the perfect time of year to declutter holiday decor. Again, a lot of donation centers won't actually take it any other time of the year than this. And what I think is a really great tactic if you have a lot of holiday decor, well, just to decorate, decorate your house for the holiday and then see what's left over. You know, I've gotten really good at data collecting. So I'm always looking at like, what's at the bottom of the bin? What haven't I put out the last couple years? What have I lost value for? What's maybe not the style anymore? And really being willing to let those go. When I look back, cause I've been doing, I've been sharing about decluttering holiday stuff for, I don't know, four or five years now. And it's so interesting. Like I look back at stuff now um, from past videos that I've donated because I just wasn't using it. Or we went from one house to another and it just didn't fit the space. I don't miss any of it. I don't even remember <laughs> any of it, but I definitely don't miss it. And now I feel like I've got this like one bin of holiday decor. It all works in our house and it's kind of stood the test of time. And I get a couple new things each season and I really enjoy that. And so what had become a burden for me was maintaining all of this holiday decor and trying to decorate really well. Now I just know the season I'm in, how much inventory I wanna put out and it feels really good. Okay, and obviously this is the absolute best time of year to declutter kids' toys. So they have the hope of new toys coming in. I, I have a question for you though. Um, I don't generally take the angle anymore of let's declutter toys so that we can share them with kids that don't have toys because, well, uh, it got a little confusing, you know, if the gentleman in the red suit visits your house because then they're kind of like, well, why don't they get, you know? Um, and then also, 
I don't think the places we're donating to that they're actually going to kids that don't. So it always felt like a little dishonest to me to be positioning it that way. So I look at it more like I am using toys to help teach my kids how to manage inventory. And so we just have a lot of discussions now around hey, are you still playing with that? Are you still using it? We're always gonna keep things that we use and enjoy, but oh, hey, look, I'm, I'm looking down here right now and like no one has played this game in a very long time. So let's move it out and make room for new stuff because we do know some new stuff will be coming in over the holidays. You know, so that's kind of like the logical approach. There are some other tactics though, if you're like, yeah, love that idea, we're not quite there yet. And so there are some other tactics that you can use with your kids, like say, hey, here's a box or a laundry basket. If you fill it up, I'll give you $5. Or you could say, before we celebrate Christmas, you have to have your room cleaned up and cluttered and organized. May I help you with that? If you want help, I'm here to help you. If not, you're you're welcome to do it on your own. But either way, the only way we're gonna let new toys come in, especially for kids that are just like a little bit older, is if we invite some old stuff to leave first. And so there, again, there's different ways that we can approach this. And in the beginning, maybe they just willingly only let go of a few things and then we just keep doing it. And so toys is something, I mean, we go through toys many times throughout the year, after Christmas, after birthdays. We'll talk more about toys after the holidays as well. But it's just something like we keep doing and we keep practicing. But man, marketing this time of year especially is gonna tell you, you just don't have the right toys. Get this, get that. Your kids are gonna be thrilled on Christmas morning. And they will be for a few minutes. But man, the aftermath, usually it's not the results <laughs> that we're hoping for. So anyways, long story short, great time right now to be decluttering toys as well. Okay, so next, uh, do we have any extra food that we could share with others? I love this story so much. So my mom was going through her like emergency food storage and she had noticed that much of it had expired. So she's like, well, we need to use this up or you know, or it's just totally gonna be bad. And so what she did was she had Gage go through her pantry and he exchanged the expired stuff for stuff that wasn't expired in her pantry. And she was donating the stuff that hadn't expired because you can't donate expired stuff to food shelves. And so she was, she was taking the expired stuff donating stuff that wasn't expired and I just thought that was so cool because honestly my brain was just like well I guess you know like yeah we either have to use it up and you know often expired food it's still it's still safe to eat or whatever or you just have to throw it away right like I mean uh, but it was just I just thought that was so cool that she was like swapping it out and she was gonna eat the expired stuff and donate the stuff that had not and so again she's just one of the most generous people I know I just love her so much so let's make a pass through our our cabinets and again we could do this with our kids and say hey do we have any food that we were just like not using that we could share with others i was even noticing i don't know what i was thinking i saw this tuna that's like flavored jalapeno i love jalapeno flavored things and i'm like oh that looks like it'd be a quick you know high protein snack like good whenever i've actually thought about eating this i'm like jalapeno flavored tuna gross like i see it in the cabinet and i'm like that there's just not been a day in the last like two months since i've owned this that I, that has ever sound good so I'm like, you know, instead of just continuing to look at it and like kind of be like, why did I buy that? Now is a great time of year just to donate it. So just look through Like, are there just any random things that you've acquired and you're just like, you know, probably it's pretty likely we're not gonna use this. So let's share it before it expires. Let's not have to manage it anymore. Free up some space in our cabinets and help others. And I do think we used to have this uh, therapist on the radio with us and he would talk about getting slimed by like social media or video gaming. And I think the holidays have a way of sliming us as well because it starts to become all about the gifts and the ads and the all. It's just, you know, it can, it can feel very gluttonous and self-centered a lot of times, right? And so these things that we can do to say, hey, let's turn it back to others for a few minutes, right? Let's make a quick pass through the pantry and just see if we can fill up a paper bag of groceries that we can donate to the food shelf and share with someone else. To me, that really helps to balance it out and for the season to be more enjoyable and not to walk away feeling kind of like yuck after it's all over. Another thing, I had mentioned this a few videos back, if you are looking for some, uh, like just a great appetizer to take somewhere, get some frozen meatballs, throw them in a crock pot uh, with this mandarin orange sauce from, it's just from Target, Good and Gather. It is so good. I could not believe I brought these to Diana's baby sprinkle and every single person raved about it. It wasn't just like, oh, those are good. Everyone was like, who brought this? This is so good. <laughs> so I don't know, super easy. I actually have two jars. I don't normally stock up. I was gonna give one to my mom. Um, it's cause I'm like prepared, fast, easy, like here we go, right? So super easy to keep everything on hand and I'm ready to go if we need an appetizer <laughs> in a pinch, so. 
Well, and actually let's just move down a cabinet here. So this is a great time of year to sell small appliances, tech gear that you're not using. You can list it on Marketplace and make a few dollars that can help offset your Christmas budget. So I would look around at your kitchen and just see, is there anything you have an Instant Pot Vitamix, waffle maker, anything that you've acquired that you are not using that is still in really great condition, now is a great time of year. There are lots of people that will buy things, uh, you, even though they're used on Marketplace, to give us gifts. So, I mean, if you have the box, that's great, that's really helpful, but you don't have to have it. And then again, do you just have any you know, tech stuff, game consoles, iPads, uh, phones, other things that you could sell. And again, the benefit, you're moving this stuff out of your house, you're freeing up more space, more mental bandwidth, and hopefully making a few dollars in the process. Now, again, anytime uh, that we go to sell stuff on Marketplace though, it's really important to put like some parameters around it. So set a deadline, like, I have to be able to sell this in one week. If I don't get any interest in a couple days, I'm gonna lower the price. And so put some guidelines because otherwise, you know, because we don't actually have a lot of extra time and energy this time of year. So again, what could be a benefit, making a few dollars off a of marketplace, can also become a burden really quickly if it's not selling. And so just be really practical, put some parameters around it, lower the price if you need to. But mostly I think it's me feel so good to be moving this stuff out of the house now so we can really enjoy this holiday season. Something else we started doing a few years ago was making a pass through all of our toiletries and beauty products to see if there's anything that we could share with, with women's and men's shelters. And so I even went so far because I didn't know if I would have a ton. And so then I also asked my mom and sister, I'm like, hey, if you have any extra stuff, I will make a trip down there. And a quick Google search and I found there was a women's shelter um, about 15 minutes from our house. So I didn't even have to go that far. Even with us keeping like a pretty low inventory these days, it is still amazing to me all of the things that I could find. And you know, all right, I have to eat my words a little bit here. You know, with the kids and the toys, I was like, I don't like to position it like, you know, oh, this is just going to kids in need. But it is, for me when I'm going through my toiletries, if I'm like, hey, this is gonna go to women who have been in some pretty crappy circumstances and it might just brighten their day or make them feel a little more human right now. That makes it so much easier for me to part with things. So I don't know, maybe now I'm going back and saying like, it is okay if we wanna tell our kids that their toys are going to kids that don't have enough, I don't know. I think sometimes it's good. I just think sometimes too, I don't wanna, oh, it makes us such good people for donating our toys, right? Because the truth is we have too much inventory. The truth is with a lot of these, this stuff I have impulse bought or I wasn't, I didn't make good buying decisions. And now it makes me feel better by thinking I'm donating it to someone who could make use of it, right? So it's not wrong, but it does, it does actually help me to go further. So like, <sighs> I'm just like sorting this all out with you. Thank you for listening. So anyways, do you have any toiletries that could go to a men's shelter, women's shelter? Okay. <laughs> I think you understand what I'm getting at in here. So uh, let's keep moving. And then lastly, a perfect time of year to declutter clothes. And I mean, can we help others with it, with our donations? Yes, especially stuff that's seasonal right now that um, you know others wouldn't necessarily wanna buy other times of year. It's a good benchmark. Most of us are bringing out our, our cooler weather clothes depending on where you live and just being really realistic. Like, did I wear this last year? Am I excited to wear this again this year? We met with um, the pastor who married us um, just recently and he's turning 80 this month, which is incredible. He's still so sharp and smart and it was just so much fun to catch up with him. But he was telling Tom, he was like, you know, the when we look at our life, he's like, the first 40 years of life felt like this. He was like, the next 40 to 80 have felt like this. And I know that, I mean, that I think it resonates with all of us, but especially those of you who are even a little bit further down the path, how fast does this go? How is it already at the holidays and Christmas time again? And so we just don't have time. We don't have time for stuff that's not serving us and working for us right now. So again, my value around stuff is that stuff is meant to benefit us. It's supposed to make life easier. And as soon as it tips that teeter-totter, as it goes from, I, I enjoy wearing this, it's easy to get dressed in the morning to, oh, I kind of feel bad about myself. I beat myself up that I don't fit into it. I, I beat myself up about the money that I wasted on it. I don't really like the style anymore. I find myself passing it over. As soon as it goes from benefit, tool, helpful, to ugh, like, ugh, I kind of have that like, ugh feeling. It, and it's starting to cause those more negative thoughts. It's like, done, you're done. 
I like I literally do not have time for items that are not making my life better or easier. If stuff is not making my life better or easier, I don't need it. There is absolutely no reason. It is not the most important thing. It doesn't actually really matter. And my goodness, if I just donate it and get rid of it, I'm not even going to remember it again, right? I will have long forgotten about it. And that is totally fine. This is funny. I will tell you. So I, I showed this jacket on like my fall wardrobe video. I ordered it in two colors and initially I was like, meh, I don't, it's not quite as dressy or whatever. I probably wear this one even more now than I do in this one. So this is like my my dressy shackety flannel shirt. And then this is like my everyday just running around. I it I really like it a lot. So I have two now. It feels a little excessive, but <laughs> you know, what can you do? Okay, so how'd you do? Hopefully you have a pretty good pile of stuff to move out and it's gonna feel good helping others freeing up some very valuable space in your house this holiday season and maybe making a little money <laughs> off of it too. So I'd love to know, is there anything else that you would add to the list of things that you're gonna move out of your house before the holidays? I know sometimes when we're like really busy, it feels like, oh, I don't have time for that. I'll tackle it in January. But sometimes when we're limited on time, we actually make quicker, better decisions. So I would encourage you to take this list, make a quick pass around your house, get your family to help too. And I think it's gonna feel really good. And if you still wanna check out the five days to an organized Christmas, that free workshop. I'll put a link for that as well. I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.